All right, so you want to get from the Kerbin to the Moon. Well, you need to start off with a orbit around Kerbin, obviously, so you don't crash into Kerbin. The next thing you want to do is you are wanting to wait until the moon comes just above the horizon of Kerbin, and once that happens, you just hit full speed prograde, meaning forwards in your direction, and you can use the little controller at the bottom, and you'll get there, pretty much. So, for the long conversation of how to get there, you need to have a ship with at least like two and a half, three thousand meters per second, without a V. Otherwise, you're probably not going to get there, and you can start off with a nice gravity turn to the right. Make sure that you are about 100 to maybe like 120,000 meters above Kerbin, so you can have a, a good enough lower orbit Kerbin orbit sort of thing. You know what I mean? Once you get to almost your upper apsis, you can full throttle um, in your direction of movement, so you can get yourself into a lower orbit of Kerbin, as discussed earlier. I do appreciate you watching the whole video because that helps me. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so as you saw in the beginning, but you need to kind of get into a proper orbit so that you can kind of get the right place unless you time it really well, I guess. So we can see now I'm in an orbit. You can then just keep your eye on the horizon of Kerbin and you can just push full forward and watch as your orbit is going to intersect with the moon. And as you can see, that's how far away from the moon I'll be. Then you can just fast forward until that's where you get. I was just making sure that my solar panels were open because you're likely to run out of power in this movement. I didn't have anyone on my ship, so I couldn't control it without that, and I was extending my radar. I'm busy playing in science. And so what happens is that once you hit your upper apsis, you can um, thrust uh, retrograde and what that does is it obviously slows you down it's always about either pushing retrograde or prograde it's pretty much all you have to do if you go full throttle retrograde while you are at the upper axis of the moon it makes your orbit change um, and your orbit will change so that it surrounds the moon as you can see And there it goes. So now that we have a nice orbit around the moon, we can continue to lower our lowest point on the orbit, periapsis. Um, another thing to take into note is that you want to try and land with your vessel in the sun's, on, on the side of the moon that has the sun, because obviously if you don't have the moon, or you don't have the sun on the moon, it's difficult to see, it makes it more pleasant, as you could imagine. Landing in sun is far more fun. So then you can get your um, periapsis like a thousand, a thousand five hundred um, kilometers, oh, sorry, meters above the moon, and then you go in the retrograde. So you want to slow yourself down. Um, this is a maneuver called a slow burn. So you. You burn retrograde and then you stop and then you burn retrograde and you stop and then you burn retrograde. Um, this is actually what they do in the Apollo missions as well. Um, and so then what happens is that then when you get closer to the moon, you just need to make sure that your meters per second is like 50, 100, and then you just have slow burn, slow burn. Try and time it so that when you hit the Earth, or the moon in this case, you are traveling at like five meters per second and makes for a really, really good landing. called a slow burn. Nice touchdown. Quickly do some research. For those who are wanting to know how to do research, so if you, let's for instance, say you go to the moon, um, you get your research and then you take it back to Kerbin, you get a whole lot more points for it instead of transferring it or sending it via the uh, wireless signal. So now to get off the moon, we want to get as much um, forward momentum as possible because we need to create an orbit around the moon. So you want to get up so you don't hit any of the mountains and then you just push um, what makes sense is to go at 90 degrees 
um, and then you just keep throttle down, you just keep throttle down and you will leave and you'll come into a nicer orbit. Then what you want to do is you obviously want to get your periapsis about 10,000 meters above Kerbin, which is a nice entry point. You don't want to enter. You don't want to enter um, too sharp or too narrow. You know, you don't want to bounce off or burn through. And there we are. We can detach. Um, once we're coming into orbit, we can close all of our stuff and oh my gosh, that was close. Um, we want to close our satellites and our everything. Um, and there we are. Make sure that you've got a heat shield. Um, that really helps so that you don't burn up. And then you can deploy your parachutes at about 5,000, 4,000 meters above sea level, and then they will deploy, and they open up again bigger at about 1,000. Do all your research. Remember, as I was saying, it is better to recover your vessel. So if you do research, you can keep the research um, and then what you do is you just recover your vessel and then you're done. Thanks for watching.